Good, um, uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this lecture. This is lecture number two in capacitance. And uh, we'll just have a quick recap of what we had done in the previous lecture, which was a very short one. We had seen that the capacitance, we had seen the capacitance of a conductor. Capacitance of an isolated conductor is the ability of a conductor to store charge. The better way to say this is, it is the ability of a conductor to store energy. This energy of the conductor is stored in the form of electric field. Energy stored per unit area, per unit volume is half epsilon naught E square. This energy is stored outside the conductor and we had seen C is known as the capacitance of the conductor. Q is equal to CV. This is the only formula that we are going to study in this uh, particular chapter, Q is equal to CV. So remember this and don't forget this. Capacitance of a capacitor is a scalar quantity. The SI unit is farad. One farad is one coulomb per volt. If you have a charge of one coulomb and the potential of the conductor is one volt and the capacitance will be known as one farad. Capacitance of a conductor it depends on the size and shape it depends on the surrounding medium it depends on the presence of other conductors capacitance of a conductor does not depend on the charge of the conductor the potential of the conductor or the potential energy of the conductor i hope everyone understands this yes or no no or yes yes sir first heading for today that we are going to do is capacitance capacitance of an isolated spherical conductor or a sphere capacitance of an isolated spherical conductor or an isolated sphere. So basically what we are going to have is a sphere, a spherical conductor. A spherical conductor like this. A spherical conductor like this. Now even if it is a spherical conductor, it could be a solid sphere of radius r. If I give charge to this sphere, where will the charge come on this sphere? Outside, on the surface. It will only come on the outer surface, even if it is a solid sphere, or it may be a hollow sphere. It may be a sphere which has a spherical hole. Whatever charge, let me give it a positive charge plus Q, it will come on the outer surface of this sphere. Now, if I talk about the potential of this sphere, we understand that potential at infinity for this sphere is taken as zero. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Now, potential of any point inside or potential of the center of the sphere or the potential of any point on the surface. KQ by R, sir. That is known as the potential of the conductor or potential of the sphere. The potential of this sphere is KQ by R. Now, instead of writing it as KQ by R, I am writing it as Q by 4 pi epsilon naught R. The same thing, I have just put the value of K as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. And I have assumed here that this sphere is surrounded by vacuum. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. I can write this formula now in this fashion. Q is equal to 4 pi epsilon naught R multiplied by V. For a given conductor in a given medium, this 4 pi epsilon naught into R is a constant term. Yes or no? Yes, sir. If I try to compare this with the formula that I have made for capacitance of a conductor, Q is equal to CV. I can understand that the capacitance of this isolated spherical conductor 
the capacitance of this isolated spherical conductor can be written as 4 pi epsilon naught into r and that becomes that becomes the formula for capacitance of an isolated sphere do we understand this yes sir i'll give you one minute but first listen to me you can see that this capacitance depends on r do we see this yes or no yes sir this capacitance depends on r that means when i say r it was a sphere if it if it was a disk the potential would have been different if it was a square plate the potential would have been different so basically when i say this r this r basically stands for a size shape or geometry yes or no yes sir this r comes because of its size shape or geometry and this epsilon naught comes because of the medium so you can see the capacitance of this isolated sphere or isolated spherical conductor depends on the medium it depends on the size shape or geometry it also depends on whether other conductors are present or not we will see that in the lecture forward this is the capacitance of an isolated spherical conductor do we understand this yes or no yes sir now if we now uh, this uh, if we try to find out the capacitance of earth if we find out the capacitance of earth assuming it to be a sphere if we find out the capacitance of earth the capacitance of earth the radius of earth is equal to 6400 kilometers 6400 kilometers divided by 9 into 10 to the power 9 which is the value of 4 pi epsilon naught r the capacitance of earth a body as big as earth a body as big as earth will only come out to be 711 microfarad not even 1 farad not even millifarad it is microfarad that means farad is a very very big unit of capacitance it's a huge unit of capacitance practically we cannot make even a single capacitor who has a capacitance of 1 farad forget about 1 farad even to make a capacitor of 1 millifarad we will need a sphere as big as 9 into 10 to the power 6 meters that is very big sphere so capacitance farad the unit of capacitance farad is a very very big unit so in uh, common practice the capacitance that will come across practically in our day-to-day -day life those capacitance would be of the order of micro nano and pico farads do we understand this yes sir this is capacitance of an isolated spherical isolated spherical capacitor if it is placed in vacuum if it is placed in a medium whose dielectric constant is k or whose relative permittivity is k i hope you remember the term relative permittivity yes or no no yes yes sir then the capacitance becomes 4 pi epsilon naught into k into r this epsilon naught into k this k is known as the dielectric constant did i tell you about this dielectric constant yes sir so if the medium around the conductor is a dielectric of dielectric constant k or a medium whose relative permittivity is epsilon r epsilon r and k are the same thing then the capacitance of this isolated spherical conductor becomes 4 pi epsilon naught r into k that means i can also write 
that means i can also write the capacitance in the medium capacitance in the medium to capacitance in vacuum or air the ratio of that would be equal to k do we understand this or this has gone above our head saying bye bye understood sir understood sir now i will give you 2 minutes sir to note down everything on the board sir then we can uh, go ahead and write the next heading and what is the next heading the next heading is this energy energy of a spherical conductor now we have already seen i have this spherical conductor whose charge is q whose uh, radius is r i have already seen that uh, mm, the potential on the surface of this conductor v is q by 4 pi epsilon not r yes or no Yes. and the capacitance of this conductor is 4 pi epsilon not r yes or no yes sir now i have also seen its uh, energy the self energy of this do you remember what is the energy u of this isolated spherical conductor what is the energy of an isolated spherical conductor anyone remembers it obviously you don't remember it because it was two days back that we did it can't remember things from two days back chodo kal ki baat into e not square how much half into e not square half into e not square right the energy of this one was uh, k q square by 2 r or it can be written as q square by 8 pi epsilon not r not two class we did it yesterday we did it yesterday we did it yesterday and today we have forgotten it so good so good anyways it is expected from you guys that you will forget it so there is nothing new new would uh, i will be surprised when you remember it so if you remember it then i would be surprised i'm not surprised by you forgetting it Okay, we did not do it yesterday. We did it day before yesterday, and that is why it is not with me because that thing has already already being uh, wiped out from my uh, system. Anyways, we did. energy of an spherical conducting sphere and mutual energy of two spheres you would have forgotten it but anyways it was q q square by 8 pi epsilon not r now i can write it in this fashion q square by 2 times of c so from now onwards energy of a conductor will now be said in this form q square by 2c 
That is the second formula that you must remember. The first formula that you must remember is Q is equal to CV. If you put the value of Q is equal to CV, this formula can be written as half into C into V square. This formula can then also be written as half of Q into V. So these are the three different forms in which I can understand the energy of an isolated conductor, whether it is spherical or not. The energy of a charged conductor can be written by this form. The energy of an isolated conductor can be written by this form. I hope you understand this. I'll give you two minutes to note this down. So we move ahead. What I have seen in the previous year uh, papers that they give question on this type. What type of questions are there? They will have spherical drops, a large number of spherical drops, n number of spherical drops, each having radius r, Capacitance C, charge Q, potential V, and energy U. Now, these drops will be combined together to form a bigger drop. Or a bigger drop can split up into smaller drops. The question, the concept remains same. If a large number of drops make a bigger drop or a bigger drop, get splitted into a large number of smaller drops, what happens to their charge, what happens to their radius, and what happens to their voltage. It's very easy to understand this. We are not going to solve it. We are just going to write the results and uh, try to understand this. So the charge, the total charge on the bigger drop will be N times Q. Do we understand this? Yes. Then, you must understand that when these uh, smaller drops become a bigger drop, the total volume remains constant. And therefore, you will get the radius of the bigger drop, capital R, as R times n raised to the power 1 by 3. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Since uh, capacitance is directly proportional to the radius, the capacitance will also be in the same ratio. Potential would be also in the same ratio. Everyone is understanding this, yes or no? Yes. Or oh, this is going above our head, saying bye-bye. 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 No. Similarly, we can find the energy. The energy of this bigger drop will be U times n raised to the power 5 by 3. So just remember these things. You can easily understand these things. We are just writing them. We are just writing them as a, a concept, as a point. And I hope you can remember this point. Yes or no? Yes. I'll give you two minutes to note this down. Well, then we come back to this sharing of charge. We have two conductors. Charge Q1, capacitance C1, voltage V1, energy U1. The quantities for the other conductor are Q2, C2, V2, U2. They are connected by a conducting wire. The charge will flow unless the potential becomes same. Yes or no? Do we understand this? Yes, sir. What? What are the important things that you must remember here? Whenever there is a difference in potential, <clears throat> do we understand this? Yes. Charge will move. Which charge will move where? Which which charge will move where? Which charge moves from where to where? High potential to low potential. Which charge moves from where to where? 
positive charge from positive charge to moves from high potential to low potential positive charge moves from higher potential to lower potential negative charge moves from lower potential to higher potential and this movement will keep on this movement will keep on will be continuous till the potential of the capacitors becomes same do we understand this or it has gone above our head saying bye bye yes sir everyone understands this yes sir yes or no no yes yes sir okay so this is what we have written again now the same thing we have written before also before we had written it in terms of uh, q and radius r now we are writing it in terms of q c and v where c is the capacitance of this conductor do we understand this so basically you can see before connection and after connection the capacitance will remain same capacitance does not change because capacitance does not depend on the charge and the potential do we understand this yes but you look at the charge q1 and q2 are the initial charge q1 dash and q2 dash are the final charge okay you can see this i hope it's a bit small but i hope you can see this yes or no the yes. potential is v1 and v2 initially the final potential becomes v do we understand this yes sir yes so no no yes i'll give you 2 minutes to note this down so these are the unknown in terms of the known quantities the first point that you must remember always in such case that the total charge of the system remains constant do we remember this yes or no yes sir the total charge of the system remains constant so that means q1 plus q2 the initial charge must be equal to q1 dash plus q2 dash you can call it as q from there you can find out the value of from there you can find out the value of q2 dash and q1 dash in terms of r1 r2 in terms of c1 c2 do we understand this how i found it out you have already done this before yes or no yes common potential is total charge divided by total capacitance you can write it in this form you can write it in any of the four forms we all understand this please look at me then you can write it down yes there is always a energy loss the initial energy is always equal to the final energy you will understand this so there is always a loss of energy and this loss of energy u i minus u final will always come out in the form of heat in the wire do you understand this whenever these uh, spheres or these conductors are connected the final energy of these conductors or sphere is always less than the initial energy because some amount of energy goes in the form of heat do you understand this yes whenever we are using this uh, formulas we have to use q1 q2 v1 v2 with proper signs do we understand this or it has gone above our heads saying bye bye we got it bye bye we got it sir two minutes you have let us move ahead i hope you have noted down the pointers let us move ahead and uh, do this questions so this is the first question comes on your screen now eight drops of mercury of same radius and having the same charge coalesce come together to form a bigger drop what is the capacitance of the bigger drop compared to the smaller drop i'll give you one minute to do this option d is correct so i hope you remember how to do it capacitance becomes n raised to the power 1 by 3 times the original capacitance c do we understand this yes everyone understands this yes sir okay great that takes me to the next question two spheres a and b of radius 4 and 6 cm are given charge 40 80 and 40 micro coulomb respectively they are connected by a fine wire the amount of charge flowing from one to the other is how much they have not specified whether it is positive charge or negative charge we will assume that they are talking about the positive charge 
what is the amount of positive charge that flows from one to the other? I'll give you two minutes to give me the answer for this one. Option D, that is correct. You can find out. I've already given you the formula. You can find out the value of Q2 dash. Q2 dash will be equal to total charge Q into radius R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Yes or no? Yes. And similarly, Q1 dash will be equal to Q into R1 divided by R1 plus R2. So Q2, the charge on the second sphere is how much? And the first sphere is how much? I think the first sphere, it is 48. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, sir. And on the second sphere, it is? 72. 72. So what has happened is 32 micro coulomb positive charge has flown from A to B. Yes or no? Plus 35, 32 micro coulomb has flown from A to B. Or you can say minus 32 micro coulomb has flown from B to A. Do we understand this? Yes. Everyone understands this? Yes. This initial charge on this one was 80 micro coulomb. And initial charge on this one was 40 micro coulomb. So you can say, number one, remember how I'm saying this, you can say that plus 32 micro coulomb has flown like this, yes or no? Yes. Or you can say it like this, minus 32 micro coulomb has flown like this. Do we understand this? Yes. Plus or minus, nothing else. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Okay, I think this question, a similar question appeared in JE of this year. Anyways, two insulated metallic spheres of three and five micro coulomb capacitance are charged to 300 and 500 volt respectively. The energy loss when they are connected by wire is So uh, the answer for this one, the change in energy or heat given is very simple. You can straight away use the formula C1. You can straight away use the formula C1, C2 upon two times C1 plus C2 into V1 minus V2 whole square. You can just put the formula, get the answer and stay happy. Do we understand this? Yes. This is the next one. 64 small drops of mercury, each of radius R and charge Q, collect to form a bigger drop. The ratio of surface density to each small drop with that of the big drop is? So here, what we have to do is we have to find out the ratio of surface charge density. Sigma. Sigma for the small drop divided by sigma for the big drop will be equal to charge of the small drop divided by 4 pi r square divided by charge of the bigger drop divided by 4 pi capital R square. So it simply becomes Q by capital Q, the ratio of charge multiplied by r by small r squared. Q by Q. If I put the value of Q by Q, it will be equal to 1 by n. Yes or no? 
and if I put the value of capital R by R, small r, it will be n raised to the power of 1 by 3 squared. Now, if you be patient and do it correctly, you will get 1 by n a cube. And therefore, the correct answer is option D. Option D. Option D is the correct answer. Do we understand this? Yes or no? No, yes. Yes. I'll give you one more, which uh, <clears throat> encompasses everything, and then we will move ahead. <clears throat> this one is the next one. A and B are two isolated conductors. They are placed at a large distance from each other. When they are joined by a connecting wire, what are the final charges? Solve the question, get the answer, and stay happy. So how are you supposed to do this? We just have to put the formula. If I call uh, the final charge on QA as QA, that will be equal to the total charge. Total charge is uh, 6 plus 39 multiplied by the capacitance of this one is 6 divided by the total capacitance is 3 plus 6. So the charge on the capacitor A will be 6 micro coulomb. So Mm, okay. Charge on capacitor A should be 3 micro coulomb. They should get interchanged. What are the final charges? Yes, I have written it wrongly. The capacitance is 3 micro coulomb, 3 micro farad. So the charge on the capacitor A, whose capacitance is 3 micro farad, will be 3 micro coulomb. And charge on the capacitor B, whose capacitance is 6 microfarad, would be 6 microcoulomb. You just had to apply the formula and get the answer. So basically what you see is charge is going to get interchanged. Find out the heat produced. To find out the heat produced, we have to just put the formula half into C1, C2. So 3 multiplied by 6 divided by 3 plus 6 multiplied by V1 minus V2 square. V1 is 2, V2 is half square and the answer will always come in microjoules. So the answer for this one would be 9 by 4 microjoules. To find out the common voltage, you can do Q1 plus Q2 divided by C1 plus C2. So this will be 3 plus 6 divided by 6 plus 3. And the answer will be 1 volt. What was the problem in solving this? Please tell me. What was the problem in solving this? Potential. Sir, common potential. It is 18 by 9, sir. Sorry, 36 by 9. Take deep breaths. Open your eyes. Look at the formula and then give me the answer. I'll give you one more. Don't have one more. How did you get common potential? Okay, sir. I think that voltage. Yes. I'll give you two minutes. Do it on your own. Once you are done, please let me know. The next heading that we are going to write is capacitor. The next heading that we are going to write is capacitor. Now, What is capacitor? <clears throat> what is capacitor? We have an isolated conductor whose charge was plus Q. It has the ability to store 
discharge in the form of electric field outside this conductor and that ability is known as capacitance. The capacitance of this isolated conductor depends on what all factors? Yes? Sir? The capacitance of this conductor depends on what factors? Size, shape, geometry. Size, medium. shape, geometry, yes, and? Medium. Medium surrounding it, and? Material with... Uh... Material, no, it does not depend on the material. Presence of uh, other conductors. Presence of other conductors. So what we have seen, if we bring another conductor close to it, and give it the same charge, let us say minus Q. <clears throat> the capacitance of this system, of these two conductors, is significantly larger than the capacitance of the conductors themselves. This combination of two conductors which are separated by a small distance, this distance can be filled with dielectric. This distance or this separation or this could be filled with vacuum. This combination is known as a capacitor. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. When a... <clears throat> Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Now, what is happening in a capacitor? These two conductors that we have brought, they are given equal and opposite charges. They are given equal and opposite charges. These conductors are known as the positive uh, these conductors are known as the plate of the conductor. The one which is given the positive charge is known as the positive plate. The one conductor which is given negative charge is known as the negative plate of the conductor. Do we understand this? Yes. Sir. Now, between these two conductors, we have a potential difference delta V. We have a potential difference delta V. The charge on the positive plate, the charge on the positive plate of the conductor, the charge on the positive plate is known as the charge of the capacitor. If you look in totality, the net charge of the capacitor in this case is zero. Then what do you call the charge on the capacitor? The charge on the positive plate is known as the charge of the capacitor. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Now, it has been found out that this charge Q, which is the charge on the positive plate, is directly proportional to delta V. What is this delta V? This delta V is the... Potential. potential difference between the positive and the negative plate or Q can be written as C into delta V. This C is now known as what? This C is now known as the capacitance of the capacitor. So from one conductor, we move on to two conductors. This C is known as the capacitance of the capacitor. Do we understand the difference between the two things? One was capacitance of a conductor. This is capacitance of the capacitor. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. You can also write the energy of the capacitor can be written as half C into delta V square. Now, I'm not going to write it as delta V. I am going to write this delta V. This delta V will be simply written as V. So wherever I write V for a capacitor, that V means the potential difference. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. 
you, you can also write it as q square by c you can also write it as half q into v do we understand this yes sir now this capacitor if you want to represent it it will be represented by two parallel two parallel lines one of the parallel lines can be written as plus minus plus minus indicates the positive and the negative plate do we understand this yes sir i'll give you two minutes to note this down and what all factors does the capacitance of this capacitor depends on well it depends on the area or instead of writing this as area you can write it as size shape and geometry of plates what is the size what is the shape what is the geometry of plates it depends on the distance between the plates it depends on the dielectric constant or dielectric medium which is in between the plates it depends on how the plates are how they are overlapped what is the overlapping how are they oriented and all those things one plate is like this where is the other plate what is the orientation do you understand this yes sir so uh, the, these are the factors on which capacitance of a capacitor will depend on now depending on the shape and the arrangement of plates there are different types of capacitors three different types of capacitor parallel plates spherical and cylindrical and we will try to do them in today's class i'll give you two minutes to note this down And then we write the next heading and the next heading is parallel plate capacitor. Parallel plate capacitor. Now, what do you mean by a parallel plate capacitor? What do you mean by a parallel plate capacitor? In this parallel plate capacitor, you will have two plates. One plate having positive charge, the other plate having negative charge. Sometimes it is shown like this, the outer plate, one of the plates is earth, separated by distance D. As you can see, A is the area of the plates and D is the distance between the plates. Do we understand this, yes or no? Yes, sir. Now. The charge on the capacitor will be uh, known as plus Q, which is the charge on the positive plate of the capacitor. We know that uh, the electric field. Now, uh, uh, let's just write what we know about this capacitor. The surface charge density sigma will be Q by A. Yes or no? Yes, sir. The electric field between the two capacitors will be written by Q by a epsilon naught yes or no yes sir it is constant the potential difference between the plates because the electric field is constant can be written as q d upon a epsilon naught yes or no yes sir from here you can write q is equal to a epsilon naught by d times v yes or no yes sir so looking at the terms you can see that the capacitance of this capacitor can be written as A epsilon naught by D if it is completely filled with vacuum or air. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. It, we have also found that if it is filled completely with a medium of dielectric constant K, the capacitance becomes K epsilon naught A by D. So we can write it here only. If it is filled with a dielectric of dielectric constant K, we will see what is a dielectric. We will see the dielectric constant right now. You can just write it. 
capacitance of this capacitor when it is filled with a medium as you can see now everything is coming uh, capacitance is directly proportional to area capacitance is directly proportional to area so that means if you increase the area capacitance will increase if it is a square plate it will be different it will if it is a triangular plate it will be different if it is a rectangular plate it will be different so it depends on size shape geometry do you understand this yes sir this capacitance is inversely proportional to the distance if i make the distance smaller capacitance will become larger and this capacitance also depends on medium or the dielectric constant yes or no so it yes. depends on all these three terms do we understand this yes sir these are the formulas that uh, uh, you must uh, remember also uh, sometimes they might ask you what is the force between the two plates so i will also give you the formula for that force the force between the two plates is q square by 2a epsilon not you can write it just for the sake of writing it and uh, this force can also be written as half epsilon not into e a square so i mean i'm giving you all these formulas together so that uh, at one place you can uh, re uh, read and remember uh, all these formulas also we had seen the formula of energy density and energy density is the formula for energy density is same as the formula of uh, force per unit area or electrostatic pressure and you can see from this that both the formulae are same so you can write all these formulas together i hope everything is there on your screen yes or no i'll give you two minutes to note this down this is what we know as parallel plate capacitor we will solve questions on this but let us first uh, see the other types of capacitors as well so that uh, we can finish this part the next type of capacitor is spherical capacitor spherical capacitor spherical capacitor so in this spherical capacitor what you can have is you will have two concentric spherical shells and they will be arranged one after the other concentric spherical shells they would be concentric spherical shells and you can have them in this configuration where the outer shell is earth so what we do is we give the inner shell has charge plus q and the outer shell has charge minus q the charge will be distributed like this we will find out the potential difference between the two we already know the potential difference between the two yes or no yes sir we already know the potential difference between these two shells and the potential difference between these two shells v does anyone remember how much is the potential difference sir potential difference between these two shells which you see sir it is uh, kq by r1 minus kq by r2 sorry minus plus b so it becomes q by 4 pi epsilon not r2 minus r1 divided by r2 r1 yes or no yes sir now i can write it in this form i can write it in the form of uh, i can write it in the form of capacitance no prizes for guessing this one the capacitance of this one would be how much the capacitance of this conductor would be 4 pi epsilon not r1 r2 upon r2 minus r1 yes or no yes sir do we understand this or oh, this has gone above our heads saying bye bye
understood sir pakka we have understand this we have understood this i'll just uh, make some space because there is no space here so i have to make some space so that i can put the other thing also and then i will give you time to note it down okay if there is a medium in between it uh, this epsilon r or k comes here do we see this yes sir now there could be another case here where the inner sphere is earthed if the inner sphere is earthed then the diagram looks like this the inner sphere is earthed you might not encounter a question but uh, just remember the capacitance of this would be given by this formula the capacitance of this would be given by this formula 4 pi epsilon not r2 square divided by r2 minus r1 how this comes if time permits i will tell you inner sphere is earth outer sphere is earth if it is surrounded by a dielectric of dielectric constant i mean c1 and c2 i mean the inner between inner and the outer if we have a dielectric of dielectric constant k it will be multiplied by k i'll give 2 minutes to note this down then we come to the next heading uh, cylindrical capacitor it basically consists of two hollow cylinders of very large length the electric field between them we have uh, already seen the formula lambda by 2 pi epsilon not remember that gauss law thing yes sir from there you can find out the potential difference this is again the formula between this so you can note down this formula as formula of potential difference between two cylinders one above the other the capacitance of this system will be given by this formula if it is surrounded by a medium of dielectric constant k surrounded by when i say between the inner and the outer cylinder i mean because the entire electric field is confined between the inner and the outer part or between the plates of the capacitor do we understand this yes sir 2 minutes note this down okay then these are all the three capacitors put together parallel plate capacitor spherical capacitor and cylindrical capacitor in one thing the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor we already know is epsilon not a by d where a is the area of the plate if it is a square plate a square if it is rectangular length into breadth triangular half base into height circular pi r square and so on we understand all all of this yes or no yes sir so everything that we have done till now is given in these tables so i'll give you 2 minutes if there is anything that is missed or you want to write it in this form of this table you can note it down let me know once you are done let us move ahead and uh, see the other cases i think uh, uh we have seen all of this uh, everyone uh, understand this yes. when i fill the space with a dielectric of dielectric constant k the capacitance gets multiplied by k in all the three cases do we see this yes or no yes sir the next thing and the thing that i want you to understand is the capacitance when the inner plate is inner sphere is earth it is given by this formula 4 pi epsilon not outer radius square divided by inner radius my uh, outer radius minus inner radius that is actually equal to this and how this comes probably when we get time we will be able to understand this so if you have not noted this down then you can uh, note on this one more point here is the charge on the inner sphere the charge on the inner sphere is minus a by b times the original charge so
Remember, this arrangement is actually not a capacitor, but the capacitance of this system is equal to the sum of the two capacitors. We will understand these terms when time permits. Then you can note down these points. Well, as I told you, the capacitor does not store charge. It stores what? Outside of the capacitor. It stores electrostatic energy. It stores electrostatic energy. If two plates of unequal area can also form a capacitor, effective overlapping area is considered. Do we understand when we use the area in that formula, is actually the effective overlap area. Do we understand the concept of this effective overlap area? Yes or no? Yes, sir. You're writing this as important points. Remember, because most of these points will come as question in your exam. If both the plates of the parallel capacitor touch with each other, the resultant charge and the potential will become zero. The resultant charge and the potential of the capacitor will become zero. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. The capacitance of a capacitor is directly proportional to the overlapping area. Remember, whenever we are talking about the area, we are talking about the overlapping area. Inversely proportional to the separation and the dielectric medium filled in your place. It is independent of the charge given. Potential or nature of materials and the thickness of the plates. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Do we understand this, everyone? I'll give you two minutes to note this down. Well, the next point is the distance between the plates of the capacitor is kept small. You can see the electric field lines on the edge. They are curved because they are not constant. To avoid this non-uniformity of electric field lines, the distance is kept very small. A spherical conductor, an isolated spherical conductor is actually a spherical capacitor with one plate as the radius of the circle, radius of the sphere, and the other plate is at infinity. Do we understand this? Yes, so a spherical conductor is nothing but a spherical capacitor. One plate is here and the other plate is at infinity. Do we understand this? Yes. A spherical capacitor will behave as a parallel plate capacitor if the <clears throat> surface has very large radius and the distance is very small. Remember, the capacitance is 4 pi epsilon naught R1, R2. If R1 and R2 are exactly same, so R1, R2 becomes R square and R2 minus R1 will become the small distance D. So the capacitance will become epsilon naught A by D it becomes same as the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Are you able to understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Capacitance of a spherical conductor, spherical capacitor is 4 pi epsilon naught R1, R2 upon R2 minus R1. If the distance between R1 and R2 is very less, you can write it approximately equal to 4 pi epsilon naught R square divided by D, where D is the thickness. So this becomes equal to epsilon naught A by D, which becomes same as the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. The intensity of electric field between the plates of a parallel plate capacitor is sigma by epsilon naught. We have already seen this. The next point is, one which you know, you must note this down, the plates of a parallel plate capacitor are being moved with the same velocity. If the distance between the plates is D, then the rate of change of capacitance will be 1 by D square. Just take it as a point. If this question comes, just write the option as 1 by D square. You can find it out by differentiating. Don't worry. The ra uh, radial and non-uniform electric field exists between the spherical capacitor 
spherical capacitor has one inner sphere or inner shell and one outer shell. The field is radial and it is non-uniform. We know this. I hope you can note this down and let me know once you are. Then here are two very simple questions. A conductor gets a charge of 50 microcoulomb when it is connected to a battery of 5 volt. What is the capacity of the conductor? The capacity of a conductor in air is 50. In immersing in it oil, it becomes 110. What is the dielectric constant? I'll give you two minutes to give me the answer first for these two ones. So how are we supposed to do this? The only formula we have learned is Q is equal to CV. From here, you can calculate C as Q by V. And the answer would be 10 microfarad. Yes or no? We understand this? Yes. Capacitance in air is uh, 50. Capacitance in the medium. So C medium divided by C air becomes K. Yes or no? Yes. We understand this, yes or no? The dielectric constant K will be 2.2. We understand this, yes or no? We understand this, yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. I'll give you two minutes to note this down. Capacity of a pallet plate capacitor is 10 microfarad when the distance between the plates is 8 centimeter. If the distance between the plates is reduced to 4 centimeter, what will be the capacitance? I'll give you two minutes to give me the answer. Sir. Option C is correct. We know capacitance is epsilon naught A by D. Yes or no? So capacitance is inversely proportional to D. So I can write C1 by C2 will be equal to D2 by D1. Yes or no? Distance is made half. So capacitance will become two times. The correct answer would be 20 microfarad. We understand this. Yes or no? No, yes. Do we understand this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Comes the next question, sir. And I'll give you two minutes. What is the area of the plates of a three farad capacitor? Three farad. It's a very big capacitor. If the separation between the plates is 5 mm, I'll give you two minutes to give me the answer. So it's a simple and a straightforward question. Capacitance is given by epsilon naught A by D. So you can find out the area C, D by epsilon naught. You just have to put the values. C is 3. This is e, 5 into 10 raised to the power of minus 3. And epsilon is 8.85. You don't have to go to 8.85. You can take it as 9 just to get to your answers quickly because you can see the things are very varied. So you can write it as 9 into 10 raised to the power of minus 12. 8 upon uh, 80 upon 9, you will get something close to this. And that is the answer that we are looking at. Remember, you must get the answer quickly. And that is the concern that you must show. This is the next question. Do it fast. Give me the answer. If the potential difference of a capacitor, sometimes they may call it condenser, is changed from 10 to 20 volt. What is the increase in the energy? I'll give you two minutes to give me the answer fast. Option D is correct. The energy stored in the capacitor can be written in this form half CV square. So what is the increase in energy? So you can write the increase in energy <clears throat> will be equal to half C into final voltage V2 square minus initial voltage V1 square. You put the values and I think you will get the answer as option D. Initial voltage is 10. The final voltage is 20, 20 square minus 10 square and you multiply it. Do we understand this or this has gone above our head saying bye-bye? We got it.
नेक्स्ट इज दिस वन The diameter of a, each plate of an air capacitor. When I say air capacitor, it means a capacitor filled with air. To make the capacity of this plate capacitor equal to that of a twenty centimeter diameter sphere, what should be the distance between the plates? I hope you have understood the question. I'll give you two minutes to give me the. So how are we supposed to uh, do this? The diameter of each plate of an air capacitor. So this would be having circular plates. So the capacitance of this will be. If I call this capacitance as C, the capacitance will be epsilon naught A by D. Epsilon naught into pi. Into four centimeter square divided by d. Now this capacitance must be same as the capacitance of a twenty centimeter diameter sphere. Twenty centimeter diameter sphere. The radius of the sphere will be ten centimeters, and then the capacitance will be equal to four pi r square, four pi epsilon naught into r square. Into ah uh, four pi epsilon naught into r into twenty. This must be multiplied to keep the units correct, because the answer is in units as well. So you have to use the correct units. Yes. Centimeter square. So this will be ten raised to the power of minus four, uh, and this will be ten raised to the power of minus two. From there, you will But, get the value of d. Yes. You have taken. Diameter, sir. Instead of radius. Okay, I have second diameter. Sorry. Pi into two square. I did not see it. Solving this, you should be able to get the answer. And the answer, I think, you are getting is one into ten raised to the power minus three. Do we understand this? Again, I have taken diameter instead of radius here also. So, if I had taken it both in the diameter form, uh, they would have cancelled. No, they would not have cancelled it out. So, ten there. So, from there, you will get the answer as one into ten to the power minus three. Do we understand this? Yes. Everyone understood this. Yes, sir. This is the next one. A spherical condenser has inner and outer sphere of radius a and b. The space between the two is filled with air. The difference between the capacities of two condens condenser form when the outer sphere is earth. So in first case the outer sphere is earth. In second case the inner sphere is earth. What is the difference in capacitance? I think you already know it. Inner sphere is earth. An outer sphere is earth. What is the difference in capacitance between the two? And the answer is option D, sir. In one case, the outer sphere is earth. In second case, the inner sphere is earth. You have to find out the difference in capacitance between the two cases. I'll give you a minute to give me the answer. Just to remind you of uh, what we had already written, and you have obviously forgotten it. It's today's class only. This is, anyway, this is the capacitance when the inner sphere is earth. This is the capacitance when the outer sphere is earth. Inner sphere earth it will be outer sphere earth it plus four pi epsilon naught b. So that is the answer, my dear friends. The difference between the two will be four pi epsilon naught b. Already given you in form of a note, but you could not recollect it. I hope that you will be able to recollect it in the examination hall. The option is C, four pi epsilon naught b. I hope you are able to understand this. Have you noted it down? Yes, sir. Have you understood it? More importantly, yes, sir. Have you understood what mistake you were making? Yes, sir. 
I don't know what mistake you are making, but I hope you are able to understand it. Anyways, here I have produced a question and I hope you will be able to make sense of it. I have got two plates separated by a small distance D. The area of the plates is A. I have given one plate charge Q1 and you can take Q1 greater than Q2. The other plate charge Q2, both are positive charges. I want you to tell me the value of capacitance C, V, and the charge of the capacitor these two plates are creating. These two plates are parallel plates having the same area, separated by distance D. One of the plates is given charge Q1, the other plate is given charge Q2. You can also tell me the value of electric field, everything in this case, electric field and the charge Q. What you have to understand here is I have not given one plate as positive charge and one plate as negative charge. I have given both the plate positive charge, one of them having positive charge Q1, the other of them having positive charge Q2, Q1 being greater than Q2. You have to tell me the value of all those things. I will give you two minutes to give me the answer for this one. Uh, C equals to A epsilon naught by D. C will be equal to? A epsilon naught by D. C will be equal to? Epsilon naught A by D. Okay. Then Q1 minus Q2 by 2. Very good. Q will be equal to Q1 minus Q2 by 2. Correct. B equals to Q1 minus Q2 by 2C. Q1 minus Q2 by instead of calling it as 2C, you can call it as. Mm. D uh, Q1 minus Q2 by 2A epsilon naught into D. 2A epsilon naught into D. Correct. And what is the electric field E? Q1 minus Q2 by 2A epsilon naught. So basically what you have to understand is we had remember we had given the charges on the plate on this side. On this side, you will have charge Q1 minus Q2 by 2. Yes or no? Yes, sir. On this side, you will have charge minus of Q1 minus Q2 by 2. Yes or no? Yes, sir. On this side, you will get the charge Q1 plus Q2 by 2. And on this side, you will get the charge Q1 plus Q2 by 2. So here the charge on the capacitor will be called by this Q1 minus Q2 by 2. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Everyone understands this? This is how? Please don't get distracted by question which try to confuse you with the concept because such a question are more likely to come whether it is JE main or JE advanced. Right now, looking at the present scenario, such question can come in J advance as this one, which came in IIT J J advance of 1999. And an isolated parallel plate capacitor of capacitance C, the four surfaces have charge Q1, return Q2, Q3, and Q4. What is the potential difference between the plates? One minute. And option C is the correct option. Now remember, the facing plates will have equal charges, equal and opposite charges. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So your Q2 is nothing but equal to minus of Q3. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Now you can do this 
and understand this in various ways. There are various ways to do this question. You see that this charge is Q2 and this charge is Q3. And you can easily say that the electric field between the, uh, the electric field will be Q2 minus Q3 divided by 2A epsilon naught and the potential difference would be D, yes or no? So basically, your uh, potential difference V will be equal to Q2 minus Q3 divided by 2C. Yes or no? Yes, sir. We have just now done the question. You can do it in this way. You can do it in that way. It doesn't matter. No matter how you do it, you will always end up with the same answer. Everyone understands this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. Have you noted this down? Yes, sir. Then let us move ahead and uh, see the next uh, thing or the next topic and the next thing that we are going to see would be this. <clears throat> so we will write this heading. We will see it probably again in the next chapter. Right now, just go through this. Term, battery or cell? Battery or cell? A cell is basically a single cell. A battery is nothing but a combination of a combination of cell. Now, any battery or any cell has a positive and a negative terminal. This is a cell. If I have a combination of two or three cells, it becomes a battery. Everyone understands this? Yes, sir. Every battery or a cell has a positive terminal. Every battery or cell has a negative terminal. The positive terminal is a terminal which is that higher potential. Yes or no? Yes, sir. And the negative terminal is a terminal of lower potential or low potential. Yes or no? Yes, sir. What is the function of a battery or a cell in an electrical circuit? Now remember, whenever we talk about electrical circuit, we talk about a path where current can flow or charges can flow. Circuit. Circuit is nothing but a path. where charges or current flow. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Charge or current can only flow when the circuit is closed. Do we understand this? Yes. Sir. The circuit is open. Charges or current cannot flow. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Now, if you have two conductors, these are the two conductors. Let us say one of them is positive and the other one is negative. And I connect them by connecting wire. You can see there is no complete circuit. They are only connected by a conducting wire here. Charges will flow, but they will only flow till the point when the potential of the two conductors becomes same. Yes or no? Yes, sir. After that, the flow of charges will stop. Yes or no? Yes, sir. If you want a continuous flow of charge, continuously that charges must flow from one point to the other point. You must need something that gives you something. What is that something that you need and what is that something that you put to get that something? To have a continuous flow of charge in a circuit, what do we need? To flow charges or current in a circuit com continuously to flow or to make flow 
current or charges in a circuit continuously what do we need we need a circuit that is closed there must be a closed path so that the charges or current can flow apart from having a closed path what is the next thing that a circuit or a what is the next thing that a circuit should have so that the current or charge can flow continuously in this case current or charge will only flow till the potential of this blue and the pink conductor becomes same i want a continuous flow what should i do to have a continuous flow of charge yes and connect positive charge and negative charge again from the opposite sides of so i connect it like this oi 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 like this what is the heading of the thing that we are doing now what is the heading we should connect a battery what is the purpose of a battery potential difference a battery or cell creates creates what creates a pd or potential difference between two points in a circuit and hence current or charges can flow if there is no battery current or charges cannot flow because there is no potential difference if you have two conductors at different potentials charge will flow but only up till the time when the potential becomes same it will take very less time for the potential to become same so that is the use of battery or a cell in a circuit my dear friends if you have not known it till now this is the first and the last time you are hearing it please keep it in your mind a battery or a cell creates a potential difference between two points in a circuit so that current or charge can flow in that circuit that is a function of the battery or the cell give you 2 minutes to note it down Once you are done, please let me know. Done? Done? Now, whenever we are talking about batteries, whenever we are talking about batteries, we are talking about uh, EMF of this battery or cell. EMF. of this battery or cell what is emf of battery or cell emf is known as electromotive force the emf of battery or cell is work done per unit charge in moving a positive charge from negative to the positive terminal inside the battery inside the battery 
this is inside the battery that we are talking about if if i move a charge q not inside the battery from the negative to the positive terminal the emf e of the battery will be w divided by q not do we understand this do we understand this This can also be written as this is also equal to EMF of the battery is also equal to the potential difference across its terminals when the cell or the battery is in OC, open C open circuit or you can say not connected to anything so if i have a battery which is not connected to anything the emf of this battery will be equal to v where v is the potential difference across the terminals do we understand this Do we understand this? So from here, you can also write one more thing that the work done by a battery will always be equal to how much charge it is, how much charge is moving multiplied by the EMF E. Do we understand this? Now this work done by this battery can be positive or this work done by the battery can be negative. It is taken as positive when the battery is getting discharged and it is taken as negative when the battery is getting charged. So far, so good. Do we understand this? I'll give you one minute to note this down. Then uh, you can write this. Whenever we talk about battery, we talk about ideal battery and real battery. A real battery, an ideal battery does not exist. But if it exists, if it would have existed, uh, it has no internal resistance, whereas a real battery has internal resistance. Do you understand this? Yes or no? Do we understand this? For a real, for an ideal battery, you take, you find out V in open circuit or you find out V in closed circuit, it is always equal to EMF. But in a real battery, in open circuit, it is equal to EMF. In closed circuit, it is not equal to EMF. In fact, V is greater than EMF if the battery is getting discharged. And this V is less than EMF when the battery, oh, sorry, I've written it. Uh... I've written it ulta. V is greater than EMF when the battery is getting charged. And V is less than EMF when the battery is getting discharged. I hope you understand the meaning of getting charged and getting discharged, yes or no? You understand the meaning of getting charged and getting discharged, yes or no? Are you noting it down, Bacha? Are you noting it down, Bacha? Have you noted it down? Noted it down? 
well as you can see this is discharging and this is charging when the battery is getting discharged work done by the battery is positive when the battery is getting charged the work done by the battery is negative do you understand this do you understand this everyone is able to understand this i am not seeing whether you are able to follow me or me or not everyone has noted this down everything okay then take care so we'll finish this class here the thing that we have discussed is uh, battery and its emf i hope you have taken it down yes or no you don't have to understand the definition of emf you just have to understand when it is positive when the work done is positive and when the work done is negative have you noted it down don't know what you are doing not getting any response from anyone anyways i will have to wind up this class here and uh, i hope you have noted down what we are supposed to do if you have not noted it down the lecture is already recorded you can go back watch the lecture and see what we have missed okay so i'm not able to hear anything i'm not able to make out anything i will wind off this class here okay bye bye